Hi guys! Uh, in this video, I wanted to walk us through the Blackboard course site for Chem 120. And so I'll talk about things like the syllabus and the schedule and the exams that you'll need to do this summer. And I'll go through uh, some of the other links here uh, that you see on the Blackboard course site. And hopefully at the end, I'll give you some study tips to, uh, to help you improve your performance uh, in the course. So uh, we'll start with the syllabus. I won't try not to dwell on this for too long. So I can get that opened for us. Okay, so I will be your instructor for this course, Dr. Maddox. Um, I don't have any scheduled office hours, um, although I will be uh, on campus during the lab days. And so there will be a particular time of day that you can find me on campus. Uh, I expect some of you will be taking the course uh, remotely since it is a web-based course. Uh, and so you'll need to use uh, my email address to get a hold of me, and I'm happy to make appointments any day of the week uh, during business hours to, uh, to chat with you about the course. Uh, here are the details for the course, the prerequisites, uh, you know, Math 116. Uh, you have to either already have credit for the lab or be in the lab uh, in order to take this uh, lecture course. Uh, the textbook that we use, we use the OpenStax chemistry textbook. It's available for free from the OpenStax website. And I'll also show you that uh, I do have a PDF of the textbook on the Blackboard course site that you can download. Uh, something that's different about my summer course um, that uh, from the regular fall semester and spring semesters is that I do not use sapling. I do not use sapling for homework in the summer and in the winter term. There just really isn't enough time uh, to do both, both sapling and prepare for the exams and things like that. So for the homework, uh, which I'll talk about momentarily, uh, you'll be essentially working end of chapter problems from the textbook. So we'll focus mostly on the textbook. Uh, here are the official colonnade learning objectives. Uh, this course is a colonnade um, natural science course. Uh, I tend to focus more on this rather generic learning objective. The idea of the course is, is for students to develop basic chemical knowledge and enhance their problem solving skills in the various topics that we cover. And so this bullet list that you see here this is essentially all the main ideas or the main topics from the chapters that we'll study. I have very specific learning objectives in the lecture slides. And so at the beginning of each section that I cover in the lecture, there's a set of learning objectives, which are the same learning objectives that you'll find in the textbook. So you'll find that I follow the textbook pretty closely. And all of the things that you are really important that you need to be able to do are, are itemized in the uh, in the lecture slides themselves, rather than putting them all here in the syllabus. Uh, in terms of work that you need to do uh, in preparation for exams and things like that, um, I'm, uh, I can't overstate the importance of reading the textbook, so reading through the chapters, uh, studying the concepts, and then also practicing the example problems and then practicing homework problems. Uh, so those are the types of things that, that you should do. I'll have my video lectures up on uh, YouTube, which you can watch. And while you watch, you can read along in the textbook. I, I follow the textbook very closely. So you can essentially watch a short segment of the video, then read, work a few problems, and then when you're ready, go on to the next section. And then you can watch, read, work problems, watch, read, work problems. That's That's my... Um, best strategy that I can offer for um, for learning the material, especially in a very short amount of time like we have here in the summer. We have just four weeks, and so uh, it's quite a lot of work. It's a big commitment, um, but it's over quickly, so that's good too. Um, in any case, uh, I'll talk more about the textbook and the homework problems um, uh, later on in this video. I will make one more point about the homework is that I'm not actually going to collect any of the homework for a grade. Uh, you really need to have the self-discipline to work those extra problems uh, as you study uh, really for your own benefit and for the benefit of your performance uh, on the exams. Speaking of the exams, I'll say a few words right now. We're going to have uh, multiple midterm exams. I essentially offer 
uh, one exam per chapter and we're going to cover about 10 chapters. Now uh, these are short exams, okay? So they're not long exams like you might have taken in the spring term or in the fall term if, you, if you've taken Chem 120 before. Uh, these are short 15 multiple choice questions per chapter and um, they cover uh, conceptual content, so items that you would read about in the, um, in the chapter and that I discuss in the lecture videos. And then there's also, in Kim 120, there's a lot of math problems uh, related to the content. So, so the exams will be both qualitative and, and quantitative, all multiple choice. Uh, and just uh, while, you're, while we're talking on the subject, I'll mention that uh, you'll have 45 minutes to complete each exam. That there'll be a window of time, which I'll go over when we look at the schedule, when the exam will become available to you, and then when the final deadline is. Any time in that multi-day window, you can start the exam, and then once you start it, you'll have 15 minutes to complete it. And there'll be about 10 such exams uh, over the course of the next month. Uh, keep, it may sound daunting, 10 exams, but they're very short, Okay, so they don't, uh, they don't take a whole lot of time. Uh, to complete. I will point out that the exams will be open book, open notes, so uh, any material that you generate you can have access to while you take these exams. You'll be taking the exams on Blackboard. Uh, the exams are open book, open note, however students should complete the exams independently. That is, uh, you may not work with other people when taking the exams. And you may also not use external websites. And what do I mean by external websites? I mean anything other than Blackboard. So if you uh, would like to use materials that I've posted on the Blackboard page, you're welcome to do that. Uh, for, uh, however, you, you may not access other, other websites when you're taking uh, the exams. The last little thing I have here on the exams is please do not make copies of the exam materials. Okay, so we've got about 10 midterm exams. Uh, there is no comprehensive, I don't do a comprehensive final in the summer term. You'll receive a numerical score on each, on each midterm exam and then each midterm exam is equally weighted in determining what I call the average course score. That'll be a score out of 100% and then the course score is then used to assign letter grades at the end of the semester using, or at the end of the term, I should say, using the standard scale uh, that you see here. If you need to withdraw from the course for whatever reason, uh, keep in mind that it's up to you. It's your responsibility to contact the registrar's office and to, and to drop the course if you need to. Um, For an online course, the attendance policy is stated down here. Students must maintain a high degree of engagement with the digital content. That means that you need to be watching the lecture videos, you need to be reading the textbook and working those problems, and um, in terms of, of, of engagement in the course, uh, you also need to be responsible to email inquiries via your official WKU email account. That will be the way in which I contact students um, during this course. And so you need to get in the habit of checking your WKU email account very regularly. Uh, for example, if you have a phone that has um, email on it, uh, I would recommend that you have your email forwarded to your phone in some fashion. Um, that way you won't miss anything that I will send out via email. Uh, I have um, essentially fairly standard policies with respect to academic dishonesty, student accessibility services, and Title IX. Uh, just related to the academic dishonesty, um, if I detect instances of cheating on the exams, uh, that is using external websites or people coordinating their activities on the exams, uh, I will assign failing grade in the course, and then I'll also refer the matter over to the Office of Student Conduct. Um, there's really no good reason to cheat. Uh, I am very willing to help any individual student improve their performance. 
Um, and so if you're struggling in the course, uh, just reach out to me and I'd be very happy to help you improve. So, so don't, don't fall down the, uh, the path of, of academic dishonesty. It's, it's very serious uh, and, and you don't want to have anything to do with, uh, with that. If the Student Accessibility Services or Title IX uh, policy applies to you, you can let me know about that. Uh, for now, I think what we'll do is we'll turn over to the course schedule. So here is what I envisioned generically people would do. Um, I base this generic schedule on a hypothetical student that is available to study during the weekdays, but maybe they don't study on the weekends. Uh, your situation may be the exact opposite. I think you can modify this schedule uh, to suit your own schedule. So this is just kind of what I came up with. What I imagine is that it'll take a student at least two days of work to complete one chapter. And so that would involve watching the lecture videos, reading through the textbook, and then working some of the homework problems. And so what we see here on the schedule on this uh, Memorial Day, there's you know, Memorial Day is a holiday, so nothing going on that day. Um, but then Tuesday, the first day of class, June 1st, you'll start Chapter 1, so with the reading, working problems. By Wednesday, you would have completed the lecture videos, you would have worked some homework problems, you would have completed the textbook. Exam 1 will become available to you at 8 a.m. on that Wednesday. Okay, so at 8 a.m., Exam 1 opens, the window starts. Uh, you may not be ready to take exam one yet. Maybe you do want to study over the weekend and so you want to take some extra time. Exam one will be due at 8 p.m. on Monday, June 7th, as will exam two. So this is the absolute latest you can submit the exam, 8 p.m. on the date listed here, June 7th. Okay, so exam one opens at 8 a.m. on Wednesday. Uh, the window opens. And then the deadline for submitting it is 8 p.m. the following Monday. In the meantime, you should have also started Chapter 2. And so I've reserved here on this hypothetical schedule two days for studying Chapter 2 material. And on that Friday, at 8 a.m., Exam 2 opens. The window for taking Exam 2 opens. And then you would have all day Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all day Monday, to do exam two, it's due at 8 p.m. on that Monday, the same date that exam one is, is, is due. So I want, basically, I want you to complete exam one and two by Monday at 8 p.m., no later. You need to complete that so that you can move on. Um, and then, you know, things continue in a similar fashion. So, you know, that Monday, Hypothetically, if you were if that was one of your study days, you would start studying chapter three. And you I, I've reserved here two days for chapter three and two days for chapter four. Uh, exams three and four, so the exams that cover chapter three and four, those become available to you at 8 a.m. on June 10th. The reason I have both exams becoming available to you on the same date is because exam three does cover a little bit of material from chapter 4 and exam 4 covers a little bit of material from chapter 3. So before you start exams 3 and 4 you really need to complete both chapters 3 and 4 because there's a little bit of material mixed around in there. Those become available to you at 8 a.m. on June 10th and then they will be due Tuesday June 15th at 8 p.m. All these times, I believe, are central standard time. Maybe you're in a different time zone, so you want to keep that in mind. If you're in a different time zone, all the times that I'm mentioning here, these are all Bowling Green uh, central standard time. On Friday, I would expect you to start chapter, um, uh, chapter 5. I've given you two business days. Uh, so Friday and Monday to study Chapter 5, and then Exam 5 opens on that Monday, and it's due, it's due the same time that Exams 3 and 4 are due. So Exams 3, 4, and 5 
must be completed by 8 p.m. Central Time on June 15th. And then it, it proceeds similarly through there. Then we'll do chapter six, seven, and eight. Their exams will be done will be due on that date. And then chapters nine and ten. Uh, the material that you need to cover from chapter 10 is actually a bit shorter than a full chapter, so I just reserve one day for that. Uh, and then those exams are due at 8 p.m. So there is a bit of a crunch time here at the end where, you know, we're trying to squeeze all the material uh, together. Uh, so be, be prepared for that. Uh, you know, during a regular semester, Chem 120 is, is more like a marathon in the summer session and in the winter session it's like you have to sprint the marathon so it, it isn't it is an intense course there is a lot of material to cover in a very short amount of time uh, you need to keep that in mind uh, when you when you take this course uh, you really got to stay focused and stay on top of of you know disciplining yourself to to study the material as we go uh, so that's that's the schedule here I'm going to go back to, let's see, back to content. Um, let me quickly show you where you'll take the tests. So see this link up here on the left hand side where it says tests and quizzes? When the tests become available to you, this is where you'll find them. Right now you can see all of the exams on my Blackboard page. If you went there, you wouldn't see anything at all. Nothing would be listed. It will be available to students June 2nd, 8 a.m. for exam one. And then exam two will be available uh, June 4th. Uh, let me just go through the options that uh, are selected for the tests to give you a sense of what it'll be like. As I mentioned, uh, each, each of these exams is 15 multiple choice questions. Uh, you've got conceptual questions, that is, they're more word-based multiple choice questions, true and false, either or type of, of logical thinking questions, and then there's also numerical problems. So among of those 15 questions, there's both calculator problems and conceptual problems. So let's see here. The timer is set to 45 minutes. So once you start the exam, you'll have 45 minutes to complete it. Uh, the window for exam one starts at 8 a.m. on the date listed on the, on the schedule, and then it closes at 8 p.m. on the date listed in the schedule, so, so June 7th for exam one. So you have any time within that window, which does include a weekend, to start this exam. And then once you start it, though, you've got 45 minutes to complete it. And that's a hard deadline, so it will auto-submit at 8 p.m., Let's see here, other aspects of the test. You'll be presented with one question at a time, okay, and you won't be able to backtrack. So you'll be given a question, you have to answer that question before you can move on. And the reason I've put these, and, and all the questions for different students are randomized. Uh, the reason that I have these here is to strongly discourage people from um, uh, from using the internet to to dishonestly take the exams, so that's that's why that's why it's presented in that way, and that's um, uh, and that's the way that I uh, need to have it. Okay, so that's that's roughly how the exams will will work. Let's see, go back to content here. Uh, let me go ahead and open up the textbook. Okay, so here's what the OpenStax textbook. You can download this file to your computer. You can, I've downloaded it to a smartphone before. For example, on, uh, if you have an Apple phone, uh, you, can, you can save that PDF file to iBooks, and I would imagine that there's a similar uh, feature for Android phones as well, or you can just download it to a laptop or, or a desktop computer. Um, so here's the textbook. I'll just scroll down a bit. Sorry to make you dizzy. Okay, so we'll just go to chapter one, take a quick look at it. Okay, so this is the chapter one opener. There's different sections, and you can read through the introduction. Look here, at the beginning of each section, there is a set of learning objectives. You'll find those same learning objectives listed in my lecture slides. Okay, 
the way I recommend students read is to treat each section as if it's a little scavenger hunt. So, you know, for this, for reading this particular section, take a look at the learning objectives, and then as you read, you want to be mindful of those learning objectives, and then as you read, you want to try to figure out, okay, what is, uh, what is this learning objective? So try to write down a note to yourself about that, about that learning objective. Um, let me keep going down here. The first part of the, you know, the chap the first chapter always has a lot of fluff material in it. Um, and, you know, if you watch my lecture videos, you you'll, you'll see that I'm distinguishing between things that are kind of on the fluff side, like extra, you know, factoid stuff that we don't really need to know, but then, you know, we'll get to important, you know, like, like, a, more of the the meat of the course, so for example, how to classify matter, that's a very important objective when learning chemistry. And so, so these, these learning objectives here in section two are a bit more uh, important, so to speak, than the learning objectives in section one. Uh, let's see, other things I wanted to show you that you'll see. Let me find an example. So here, chapter one. Chapter one doesn't have that many uh, numerical examples. You have to go pretty far in before you start to see them. But so this is an example problem. This would be something that you would want to work through as you're reading that section here. And what you'll see in my lecture videos and lecture slides is that I've incorporated these examples into my presentation. I've also incorporated examples from other books into my lectures as well. So I'm going to have probably more examples in my lectures than you'll see in the in the textbook. And so usually what I'll do is I'll explicitly work out during the lecture, I'll work out the example, you have a copy of the textbook solution here, and then I do include uh, this check your learning where there are additional questions. Um, I often will skip over these in the lecture videos uh, but then you could work them on your own, that is to check your learning. And then the answers are given here in the, in the textbook. Okay, and so here's, a, here's another example um, problem. So sometimes I work these, other times I don't. I probably didn't work this example, but I did work this one. And so some of them I work, some of them I don't work. Other things I wanted to show you. At the end of the chapter, at the end of each chapter, you'll find, let me get down there, you'll find a glossary. It's useful to look over those words. Just make sure you didn't miss any of the important terms that were discussed in the chapter. Then there is uh, a little summary of each section. It's useful to read through these uh, to see if you understand what they are summarizing. If you understand what they're summarizing, that means you probably did a pretty good job of reading uh, as you were studying. If you see things that, gosh, I don't remember, I don't remember that point, that might indicate that you need to go back and look over your notes, look over the over the section, uh, just to figure out what they're talking about. Okay, so I, I, I recommend students do read through the summary. And then here at the at, at the, the last part of the end of chapter is where you find the the problems. So these, these, uh, a lot of chapter one is, is conceptual questions. Probably further down in the end of chapter, you're going to find the uh, more quantitative problems. So let me scroll down here. Yeah, here you're getting into the sig figs and the units and things like that. And so these are going to be more numerical problems. So you'll notice that there's a lot of them. Okay, and uh, they often don't take very long to solve, and so it's it's useful it's useful to do a lot to practice as much as you can. Um, the more you do, you know, the 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 you know the the more experience you have with the material. That's that's sort of the way I look at it. At the same time, uh, time is a limited quantity, and you know you may not. Uh, what I'm recommending is that you don't dwell on problems and topics that you already understand. So if you already understand a particular topic, 
there's really not that much benefit in doing extra problems on something you already understand. You want to do problems on things that you don't understand. Uh, students always ask, uh, how do I test myself? How do I know that I got the right answer? Uh, I'm going to show you here. You go to the table of contents, and then down here in solutions, what you'll find is that the odd numbered questions have answers in the in the solution. So for each chapter, there is um, uh, a set of solutions to the end of chapter problems for the odd ones. So at the very least, I would recommend working through as many of the odd problems as you can in the end of chapter section. And you want to work, you'll at least want to work a few problems from each section. Um, and then if you want to go back and test yourself even more before you take the exam, then you can, you can work all of the odd problems. Uh, if you have time. Okay, so that's the textbook. Uh, I again, I can't overestimate the importance of using the textbook textbook to help you to help you learn the material. Um, the next thing here on the um, on the Blackboard uh, page are my lecture slides. There's quite a few of them for this course, uh, and so this would be uh, something that you'd also probably want to download. You typically wouldn't want to read the lecture slides through Blackboard. It's a little clunky to do it that way. Download that to your computer or your phone and then you can flip through the slides efficiently. Uh, here's what they look like. Uh, they do have a table of contents as well. Uh, and So these are each of the chapters here. And what you'll see is I, I follow the textbook pretty closely. So chapter one, these are the different sections. This is the first um, the first section and of the learning objectives here you'll see that I've grayed out a few of the learning objectives because they're not really testable and so I don't dwell on that in my video lectures but there is a question about the scientific method involving the term hypothesis theories and law so I, I are yeah in scientific law so I do cover that to some extent let's let's flip to a more um, problem based section let's look at There's something here, mostly qualitative there. Let me here's so here's an example problem that you'll see. And so in the lecture slides or in the lecture videos, what I'll do is I'll go through I'll go through this problem and I'll explain it. Um, here's another one where you know I'll do I'll do I'll, I'll hop around. I might not do every single one of them, but I'll do a couple and then I'll do a couple more uh, that kind of thing. And so you want to uh, follow along with these examples and um, and try to understand what it is I'm what I'm trying to, to show you okay so and and it's basically it's like that for every every single chapter uh, that we'll cover and there's there's quite a few of them let's see what do I have next here is the link I won't click the link here but if you if you click on this link it will take you to the playlist for all of the YouTube videos that I've made for Chem 120. And so there's just a whole bunch of, of videos. Uh, they go in order, they follow the chapter. Uh, and so that's that's what you should watch as you read uh, to get my explanation of the, of the material that you're covering. Here's a periodic table that you can use. Um, this is something that you might want to get started working on right away. Okay, so the list of common ions. Let me click on that. Uh, it's expected of you as a general chemistry student uh, that you will learn the common polyatomic ions. That is, you need to know their chemical formula, their charge, and their name. Uh, it's very important that, that these be committed to memory, both for Chem 120 and for Chem 222 if you need to take that course. In fact, not knowing the ions uh, will typically lower your grade by at least half a letter grade, if not a full letter grade. And so this is something, you know, that I'm, I'm recommending if you've got time before the class begins that you get some flashcards, some index cards, uh, and you, you um, memorize all of these different formulas and names. Uh, you'll need to have these known by the uh, exam two. That, uh, that material is covered in chapter two. Okay. Let's see. 
In order to help you with chemical nomenclature, I also have a nomenclature worksheet where you've, you've seen this before probably. Here's the compound name, write down the chemical formula for it. Okay, and so there's just pages and pages of these types of things. And then at the end of the document are the answers. Okay, so you can use this to, to test yourself over chemical nomenclature. Let's see, is there anything else that I wanted to mention? No, that's really about it. I think I've covered most of my study tips as we've gone through. I'll just run down the list, watch the videos, read the book, work homework problems, ask me questions via email or make Zoom appointments with me. If you're in the lab or able to come to, come to campus, uh, the lab meets on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm happy to field questions about the, um, about the lecture uh, before, the, before the lab begins. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right here.